In today's video, we invite you for a tour to Themis Solar Innovation Center. If you always wanted to learn about the alternative energy sources and expand your knowledge on the subject in an entertaining and visual way, then this is a place for you. We'll show you around the plant, walk you through the exposition and share lots of groundbreaking discoveries. Themis Solar Power Tower is a research and development center focused on solar energy. It consists of the solar power station itself, exposition and research center, and even observatory of the stars on the tower itself. But first, we want to start with somewhat more technical information for those of you who are interested in how the thermal solar station works. And before diving into the explanation, we need to point out that we are not experts in this field and just willing to share the information you can learn in the center. But now let's take a look at this picture where under number one we have the heliostats, or tracking mirrors, oriented towards the Sun. These are 201 mobile structures that follow the course of the Sun and reflect its rays to then concentrate the Sun's thermal energy, or sunlight, on the cavity receiver under number two, which sits on the top of the 100-meter tower in the center of the heliostat field. The receiver is lined with coolant tubes, where coolant is made of the molten salts that proved to be the best storage for thermal energy. Within the receiver, the concentrated sunlight heats molten salts to over 1000 degrees Fahrenheit or around 500 degrees Celsius. The heated molten salt then passes through two thermal storage tanks under number 3, where it can be stored, maintaining 98% thermal efficiency and used to produce electricity even when the sun isn't shining. Then the molten salt is pumped into a storm generator or exchanger under number 4 that allows to transfer the heat of molten salts to water, which turns into steam. And finally, the steam drives the standard turbine under number 5 by rotating about its axis that is connected to alternator under number 6, which thus generates electricity number 7. And this is the process of transformation of thermal energy into mechanical and then electrical energy. The steam of the turbine then goes into the air condenser under number 8, where it's cooled by ventilation to return to the liquid state. The liquefied steam then is stored in the cold storage tank under number 9. In addition, there are 11 parabolas concentrators under number 10, covered with mirrors, to concentrate solar radiation on an oil circuit instead of salt, which can heat, if necessary, the cold storage tank. So as you can see, this process is similar to a standard coal-fired power plant except it is fueled by clean and free solar energy. Solar thermal power plants are proved to be one of the most cost-efficient and reliable plants in the field. In Piranesa Orientalis, the development of solar-powered facilities started back in the early 1980s, when there was a need to find an alternative to the expensive and harmful for the environment fossil fuels. So, in 1983, the Themis solar station was inaugurated. But after only three years of operation, when the oil prices had dropped, it was declared economically non-profitable and thus became of no use. However, the technology developed on Themis was then widely used worldwide when building similar solar power plants. Later on, the tower was converted into the giant telescope and Themis became a research center. And now, the projects of its rehabilitation is conducted, which mainly consists of repairing the heliostats and major change from the molten salt and water to an air circuit. But let's return back to the exposition. As we enter to the first hall, we see different posters that tell you the history of the plant and solar power development in general, displays different solar energy plants around the world, and shows you the difference between energy sources and its efficiency. Also, there is a model of the Themis itself, where you may recognize all the elements that it consists of. At this stage, you may consider of getting a professional guide that will provide you all the detailed information and answer all of your questions. The exposition itself is free, but if you buy a ticket, it will allow you to enter to the experiment room, take a guided walk and approach to the heliostats, drive the small electrocars for your kids. 
The newest project in the region has been the EO, first thermodynamic solar power plant using Fresno mirrors in the world, where it used the best technologies in the field. It is claimed to produce enough energy to consume for 7,000 people and will dispose of a unique storage system that will allow energy production even at night. Otherwise, we continue on, and as you move from the entrance hall, the first thing you see are the statues of the legendary scientists, mostly in astrophysics, that created a solid foundation of knowledge and made it possible for us to further develop and excel in this field. As you move around the ground floor, you will see the auditorium door, where you can watch useful videos on the subject and learn even more. On the first floor, you enter to the first expo hall called Understanding of Energy. This exposition is focused on showing you the different energy sources, its efficiency and effect on the environment, exploring loads of alternative options. For example, here you can see a model of a village entirely run by renewable sources of energy, such as solar, wind, biomass, hydraulic. It's hard to believe how many options of alternative energy we have at our disposal and that can allow us to be completely independent. Next information stands, it tells you all the benefits of each of the renewable energy sources and the importance of hydrogen gas made of fossil fuels and biomass. Did you know that the biomass has a great potential of covering the demand of 80% of all the energy consumption in the world? Well, it turns out to be real, as the scientific proof is provided and it has lots of common sense. On this picture you can see the perfect working system based on the biomass. For the next stands, we are encouraged to learn more about the solar thermal energy. Here are presented different types of solar collectors. Another groundbreaking discovery for us was the possible use of the geothermal energy of the Earth. It comes from the original formation of the planet and from radioactive decay of materials. It appears to be an excellent energy source that's always available to us. Further on, there is a history of region of physical particles, such as photon and electron, and the importance of these discoveries for the solar industry. You get to know what the smart grid is and why it's vital to implement it to our lives.
it's explained how the nuclear energy produced and its history and the major disadvantages of its use. Here you'll find the models of the different houses where you can conduct your own little experiment and find out what works best. Overall, there are lots of different interactive elements throughout the exposition. By the end of this haul, you can learn more information about the greenhouse effect, petroleum and gas extraction and consumption. Now it's time to move on to the second floor and enter to the expo hall number 2, it's called Sun Myths and Reality. It is a big space filled with information on astronomy and astrophysics subject matter. you about the weather in space and how the solar wind is formed and of course very detailed information about our sun what it's made of its rays radiation rotation cycle and magnetism In the myth section there is lots of curious things to see, but I don't want to reveal any of that, so it's better to come and see it for yourself. As you walk out of the exposition center, you may want to go up the hill to get a better view of all the plant facilities. On the way you come across several picnic spots, which is always nice to sit and have a snack, surrounded by nature and spectacular views. Demis is strategically located in the region of Sardinia, in Pyrenees Orientales, where there is almost 2,400 hours of sunshine a year, low wind and high elevation that provides stronger sunlight. In 2017, the research center was open to the public starting from 3rd of July to the 3rd of September, every day, and the general ticket cost was 5 euros. Check out the info box below for updated information, as the schedule may vary from year to year. And this is the end of our tour. We were happy to take you on this tour with us. Hope that it encourages you to come and visit the center yourself. We believe that the innovative technology is for everyone and doesn't have to be complicated to understand. If you have any questions left, don't hesitate to comment below, we would be glad to respond to you. If you enjoyed our video, give it a thumbs up so that more people can reach it. And subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more of this type of videos. Take care and until next time, bye!